<laughs> okay. Uh, I am known for my series that's going to be launching soon, Star Trek Atlantis. I am the creator and the only writer. Re reason why I did that because I personally don't like writer rooms. It gets a little hectic. Everybody's fighting with each other sometimes about an idea. Well, this is how it all starts. Come up with an idea, whether whatever genre you want. You want a rom-com, you want sci-fi, um, you want a motion picture, you want a television series, or even just a quick MOW, which is movie of the week. Then you gotta try to produce it in your head. Okay, you gotta really produce it. Okay, let's see, how do I start this? Well, first of all, you want to get your character set. What is Jane Doe and who is she? So you have to become Jane Doe. Now you got to become Jack Doe, the boyfriend or the husband or the friend, whatever, whatever your story is. Then you got to try to get him into a room in your mind. And that's when you come up with the storyline. It's not hard to do if you have a great imagination. I like to put myself in every character I write for. I wrote on this script here, this is the pilot, the Star Trek Atlantis. See how thick it is? Mm -hmm. There's 47 people I wrote for. <laughs> And I did it by myself, and I have to put myself in their shoes. How they think, how they walk. What is their background? You have to invent the character from the ground up. Now, I know it sounds hard to do. It's not. It really isn't hard to do at all. It's very simple, actually. You're kind of writing for yourself, about yourself. I just did a rom-com. <clears throat> and I was trying to come up with 20 ideas uh, for Netflix. And I started laughing because I had two situations that I kind of used. Now, the women here, you, <laughs> you girls are going to know this one. Okay, you are in a restaurant with this handsome guy that you don't get a date with forever. Okay, you look good. Hair is perfect, makeup is done right, your dress looks great, you smell good, and you sit down at the table and you pick up that water and your nail pops off, but you grab it. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's seen it. You're dying inside. You go, oh my God, I hope this guy didn't see this. So you say, you excuse yourself for going to the bathroom and you whip out that bottle of emergency glue now you can't get the goddamn thing to open because it's stuck. So what do you do? So you're finding it open. You're trying to get it open with this damn thing. You can't go back out there with just a bare finger. <sighs> so what do you do? You pull out a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the silliness of our lives. This is what the people want to see on television. Real life. Not this um, stuffy... Uh, straightforward dialogue like hi how are you doing today like they did back in the 20s well when you write for anything you want to express your self in the sentences that are real as if you were talking to your friend family Believe me, after you write the first draft, you're going to go through it so many times. I went through Star Trek Atlantis first episode. I must have been gone through it like 60 times till I got it right. Because you always catch that little, that doesn't sound right. No, that's not going to work. And then you fix it. And then when you get it all done, 
you have to give it to your agent, and then your agent tries to sell it to, <laughs> to the, uh, the the studio, and then they want to cut it up. So that's another issue altogether. But I want to get back to the reality of screenwriting. It's a business like anything else. You have to you have to build the product, and then your agent or manager or lawyer, whatever, has to go to the studio and their heads and the right people to sell it. Once they sell it, once they buy it, you sold it. Yeah, great, you get a great check. But now the real work starts. You're going into the studio as a producer. Uh, most likely an exec. You run everything, but you're not the showrunner. Showrunners are the people who actually run the show. Hello. They do the finances. They get everybody on board. They make sure the costumes are ready and so on and so forth. Uh, your job is to go into the editing room and make sure that the lines are done right and that's the, the way you want the scene to look. There's a lot of work involved, but you know what? It's how worth it when you see your name on television created and written by, well, written by. It's a wonderful feeling. It really is. Hey, the pay's not bad either. So... <laughs> Uh, hey, guys, feel free to turn on your microphones if you have anything to interject or say. Or... Let's just have fun because that's what screenwriting is about is to have fun. It is. Now, is anybody here in this room a writer? Is anybody here? All right. Hello, Carolyn. So you get what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hi, darling. Okay. Don't be afraid to open your mics up and guys. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, I never went to had formal training in writing for, for television. I learned this on my own. I was 20. Uh, when I was really, really interested when I was really small, but I wanted to be a cop, which I was. I was a cop in Brooklyn and Staten Island, blah, 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 blah. Did my years, did some writing in between. You see my resume, it shows that I did a lot of movies. And I bought my first book on how to screenwrite. This is it here. Let's see if I can move my fingers. Sid Field. And he's not with us anymore, but uh, I kind of liked it. And then my friend, Marty Cook, wrote a book and got me um, into her way of doing things, which I suggest everybody get. It's called Write the TV. All right. I'm not trying to promote her, but, <laughs> but uh, that helps me because that shows you how to do format, um, how the studios want you to write the page, uh, the blockings with just scenes. Uh, everybody's got their way of doing things, uh, like the BBC, they got their own way of doing formatting. <laughs> uh, I tend to like television because there was a question next. I I like doing television because it's fast paced. You got a week. Let's let's go from here for a second. I know I'm jumping around. You get one day off a week. Okay, <laughs> whatever day it is. Monday. Let's make believe. You got to get the script out. Tuesday. You got to get it edited. Wednesday, it's film day. You got to get everybody in the studio, start shooting, and then you got to deal with the script supervisor and the directors and the producers and they say, this is not what I want, and then this and this, and then everybody's arguing, and then we all kiss and make a uh, facey face, and then we turn the cameras on. <laughs> right. Whoever's in this field knows what I'm talking about. And then Thursday, Editing day. That's when uh, you go in there, you get ready to go, and you put everything together for a lousy half hour to an hour show, which is actually 44 minutes. And a half hour show is actually 22 minutes of writing and filming. Um, Friday is air date. 
Saturday, you got a guy who's got to come up with an idea again. Sunday, you get to relax your brain. Eat all the candy you want. And then Monday, it starts all over again. New episode. <laughs> so I tend to love that. Movies, the motion pictures, you know, you can take your time doing that. You can sit back, drink coffee, and go in the room and BS for weeks at a time. And, oh, when's the writing day? Oh, is it the air day? Well, we're going to start filming in a month. Okay, great. And then, you know, everybody's lollygagging, and hopefully you're lucky, and it'll get picked up, well, I should say, uh, put in the theaters in two years. <laughs> All right? So that's basically what's in the film industry. Okay. I like television. I love television, because I can watch it anytime I want. It's free, <laughs> whether you're paying for cable or not. I love the fast pace, and I hope that people will start appreciating the writers more because I used to get into arguments <laughs> with the director. So how the hell you get all the credit when I do all the work? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I got a question here from Brandon. How many writers are typically on a TV team? Okay. Let's make this easier. When you watch the credits on a television show, It'll say producer, 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 which are actually your writers. <laughs> Don't say everybody in the writing. The one that says written by is the poor person that has to put everything together and put it on paper. <laughs> we give them an election. You're your week. So that's what that means. The executive producer is the actual head of the room. So I would say between seven and 15 people can be in the writer's room, which to me is ridiculous, but that's what it is. Let me see. Advice for reaching out to producers' productions. Okay. Number one, you can't. Nobody will take solicited scripts. You have to get an agent, uh, a manager. Mine, I love her to pieces. Annie, oh my God, I love her to pieces. She's been there for me since day one. She is out of California. I'm in Seattle, by the way. And you have to try to pitch it, pitch your story to a manager. Even though they're working for you, they're the ones that got to pick you. Say, okay, I'll sign you. Okay, that's how it goes. You're going to get a zillion no's until you get one yes. Okay, let's get that, let's get that out there. That goes for your managers and your agents that you're trying to get, and your studios and your stories. If I can show you, I got a stack of papers like this that are all scripts that I can't sell yet because nobody wants them yet. So my agent pushes, says, oh yeah, by the way, Giovanna's got this other one. Um, this cartoon that I'm actually doing for Nickelodeon. So it's a quick job. Hey, it's money. It pays the bills. But I think it's cute. They'll pick it up. Okay. But you got to get an agent first. You have to. Um, yeah. It's true. Ahead of your time. It's true. Let's see. How many scripts do you need to have to get an agent? Just one. Just one. It's all it is. I mean, if they're looking for something like a rom-com, put it out there. Go on the WGA, the Writers Guild, and you'll see agents and managers on the site. Click it. You're going to see a whole bunch of agents and, and managers and lawyers just for writers. You have to do a lot of writing to get you know a lot of emails and you send them a copy and i suggest you get one of these books because it tells you how to write the letter to these agents you just can't say yeah my name is john smith i got this cute little thing i want to share with you i hope you sign no, no. <laughs> that's not how you do business uh no you got to write it the right way 
this is this is a multi million dollar thing you're doing, and with companies and they're looking to make money. They can't make money unless they got a good uh, a good piece from you. Makes sense, right? Just like Cadillac pushes out those gorgeous cars, ain't nobody gonna buy them unless they're kind of cool, look do it like they are. So it's the same thing. It's a business. The movie industries, the television stations are all looking to make that buck, which can't blame them. And all I want is a little piece of it, but they can't do anything unless we come up with the idea and put it on paper and say, look, this is what I got. Do you want it? Let's talk. Call my agent. <laughs> so that's basically it. There's so much to share with you. There, it's impossible to do within an hour. I mean, it just... Uh, okay, that's not a problem. Carolyn, sorry, can you say how you got your... Okay, I got lucky. <laughs> I went... Oh, God. I must have wrote about 20 letters in a week and sent this script, the pilot, and finally... Somebody responded to me, which was Annie. Annie says, I know people in the, in the Star Trek franchise. And I really, yeah, I'll sign you. Thanks. <laughs> Nobody else contacted me yet. And this was uh, 10 years ago. So yeah, it's, all, it's all about luck. Who's, who's actually reading your email? Um, you could do it the old-fashioned way. If you live in California or New York, Go to, the, go to the agency. Take that script with you in your hand. Say, look, I got something I want to show you. How about taking a look? Why not? Won't hurt. That's how we did it back in the day. <laughs> you know? And, oh, I got no time for you. Well, you got to look at this. So <laughs> that's how you do it. So, yeah. I mean, I'm from New York. I was born and raised in New York. I'm here in Seattle. God knows why, but... I'll be back home soon. <laughs> That's how you do it, honey. It's, it's, look, you want to sell your product. That's what you want to do, but you need the, you need the agent or the, or the, uh, your dealer to go out and sell it for you. You can't do it on your own. So that's the best way of doing it. Emails, 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 and going there. Uh, I got lucky. I got lucky, so I've been blessed. How do you make sure the script is long enough for the time? Oh, that's easy. Okay. Every page is a minute. Remember that. I know it sounds weird. You put it in your head. Oh, it only takes about 13 seconds. No, honey, it's a minute. Trust me. Um, a, half hour, a half hour television show is 22 pages. That's 22 minutes. That's all they want. An hour is 44 minutes. A motion picture can be like this one, 250 pages. That's the pilot for Star Trek. That's three and a half hours to four hours. And this is what two-part. My other, my other episodes that I wrote three years worth so far, or 44 minutes. Um, that's how you know how long to do it. If you run out of time, like you say, oh, no, I, I don't have time for the ending. Well, you're going to have to do some cutting or make it a two-parter. It's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. Once your foot is in the door, once you got that that initial sell, you got that, you got the check. They, they're going to do your show. You're on set. It's a piece of cake after that. Mini series. Okay. I did too. Love it. You could do four episodes at an hour each. Uh, you could do six half hours. Depends what they order. Okay. Then let me get into that real quick. A studio will go to an agent and email all the agents and say, look, we want to get, we want a dramatic series. Four episodes of a pizza shop in Brooklyn. We want a dramatic. 
that's an order. Doesn't mean they're going to buy it. So they're going to get all the agents going to start calling their people. Okay, look, we got to get an order here for uh, this and that and that and this. I need to bust it out in a week. Okay, we'll see what I can do. We'll give it to her or him, and they uh, do what they need to do. Try to sell it. If the studio don't want it, the studio don't want it. Okay, scripts used to be 120 pages. I know you said why was. 250 or most now. Okay. 250 minutes for a television pilot is a lot. But I was told that the Star Trek franchise, usually the movies are three and a half hours. Well, I don't want to bore anybody. So I make it, I cut it in half. I left it with a cliffhanger. Then you're going to have to come next week to see the second half. Simple as that. Simple as that. Let's get CC in the room here. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to open the floor right now for questions. Turn on your mics. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to bite you. <laughs> questions? Questions? Giovanna, somebody asked, do certain agents focus on certain genres? No. They are a writer's agent, period. The only time they are focused on the genre is when the studio orders it. Uh, Paramount might turn around and say, uh, Ann, we need uh, a lovey-dovey movie, blah, 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 blah. Can Giovanna do it? That's how it works. Uh, or they need a rom-com, or they need a comedy. or it, The agent's job is to sell your product, period. Again, I'm going to go back to the car thing. GM makes all types of cars. They make all Buicks, Pontiacs, blah, 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 blah. Still GM. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't have to be um, a certain genre. What is it like to work working away from the industry? <sighs> when you're working in the in the city or town, you get invited to a lot of parties. Well, I call them parties. That's how you meet people. That's how you start uh, expanding your business. You never know. You might bump into a couple of people like you see on TV, like George Lucas or something. You know, and he might turn around and say, Giovanna, um, how about collaborating with me? You got any ideas for a new show? And you know, depending how serious they are, we trade cards and that's it. Whether he's drinking or I'm just using his name, so don't think it's true. Uh, sorry, George. Uh, whether he's been drinking a lot, he might not remember the next day. Well, goddamn, I'm going to remind him next day. <laughs> you remember that conversation we had? Yeah, well, let's get busy. So <laughs> let's do this. So, yeah, I don't like being away from my hometown, New York. I will be back next year because I'm going to try to uh, get my get an office over at Viacom CBS where I belong, and we're going to start producing the show. Uh, AI, okay, AI stinks. I don't want it. Never used it before. Nobody did it before. Uh, AI doesn't have feelings. They don't have. Um, <sighs> motions. They don't do anything. I mean. I wrote for an AI. One of my characters on Star Trek, she's the coolest. All right, I'm going to excuse my language. She's the baddest bitch on TV. You know what I mean? But when it comes to actually having a robot or somebody telling me how to write, no, that is not going to work. Okay. Your call rights list agents. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Uh, call write them. To say, look, I, I need an agent. I need representation. I got this great story. And make sure you elaborate. I know it's Hollywood crap, but oh, it's a wonderful story. It's exciting. And I need, I, I want to share it with the world. You know, ham it up. And I ham it up. That's, and then they'll look at your email. All right, maybe this kid's got something. And then maybe they'll read your treatment. Oh, I got to get into that. Okay. Does everybody know what a treatment is or an outline? 
Okay. A treatment or an outline is about three or four pages about the story. No dialogue, no nothing. It's just a short essay of what the story is about, which is usually what the studios want first and the agents. So I suggest you write your story plot outline, <clears throat> excuse my voice, and your treatment, as it's regularly called, and you send it out with a nice letter. Professional, that you're willing to, whatever. They might even offer you a, uh, uh, what did they used to call that? It's like, in other words, they'll contract you just to sell the product, and if it goes well, they'll put you on uh, permanent. I can't remember what it was called right now. It's been a long time. So a shopping agreement, that's it. Yeah, spec, that's it. Yeah, you can call it a spec. Uh, treat, I'd rather, I rather call it a treatment because a spec is just a quick idea, a couple of paragraphs. Now, if you're going to sell something, honey, get out there, write the treatment, write the outline from beginning to end. <clears throat> this is what you envision. This is what you want to sell. A spec is just an idea. That's basically it. Um, okay, Seven of Nine is not my character. Uh, again, the story is, oh, yeah, yeah, log lines, slug lines, all that stuff. Again, get the book. You got to study it on your own. Um, <laughs> that That's, again, you have to teach yourself these things. And the log line is part of your script. Jane Doe walks into the door, uh, walks into the door. She has on a robe and a big fat cigar in her mouth with rollers in her hair. That's a log line. <laughs> okay. Slug line is uh, interior or exterior, uh, bedroom, night. That, that's all part of your script. You got to tell the director and the actors where they're going to be. That's basically it. So you're not directing it. You're actually guiding your story to from, this, from your head to page. You want to picture it in your brain and put yourself there. Okay. I got a scene from Atlantis. Captain Vivian Kelly is in dire straits. Her ship is almost destroyed. The villain is out there trying to kill her. It became a personal battle with the Federation, but with her because the villain destroyed her husband's ship, a science ship, and nobody can find her husband, which was the captain. Now she's getting frustrated because she's got a team of brand new women on the bridge. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing really, but they do a great job. Now she's at the point where she goes into her cabin and she breaks down crying. Why is she crying? So you have to put yourself there. If you can make yourself cry when you're writing that scene, you got it. If you can make yourself laugh on that scene and you intentionally want to make them laugh, you got it. You got it. When do you feel a script is done? Do you ever feel you over edit yourself? Well, yeah, it happens. That's when you stop. You see, God, give it a couple of days. Give it a week. Just say, look, I have to put this down. You're screwing it up, you think, and then stop. In about a week, open it up again. Read through it. Go scene by scene from the beginning to the end with it going through your mind how it's supposed to look. Um, you might see, I'm, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of mistakes. And you're going to fix them. And when you feel comfortable enough, give it to your friend to read. Give it to your neighbor. Say, look, can you read the script for me? What do you think? Give it to a copy of it to um, 
these uh, script sites, um, shoot, uh, contests. Uh, they got these contests. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, Coverfly. Perfect. People read it. That's what they do. And then you will get feedback. Good, bad, and ugly. Of course, I always look at the good. Um, give a copy to your library. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Get other people's opinions. Talk to them about it. So, look, I'm writing a story. That's what I did. I went online and I looked for every damn Star Trek fan there was. And I said, look, this is my idea. What do you think? And they went nuts over it. Good. I sent the copy to one of those sites to get an opinion. And I got a rave review. Rave review. It's on my on my website, JovanaRizzo.com. If you click on uh, my... IMDB, excuse me, you'll see it in the overview. Have you ever had a problem with how the show turns out? Or is that just par for the course? Look, honey, once you sell it, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, they're going to give you rewrites. And they're going to give you a lot of notes. Hey, can, can she be a blonde instead of a brunette? I think it would be better. This is from the studio. Uh, instead of her driving a Cadillac, I think she'd be driving a Volkswagen. Hey, whatever gets a laugh or whatever you hate, whatever you, you paid for it, whatever you want. Her. So, yeah, it gets irritating. Like, if anybody tries to mess with my Star Trek that I worked so hard on, because I designed everything the bridge, the ship, everything. I'm going to get somebody that don't want to change it. And, yeah. I'm a girl from Brooklyn, Staten Island. I will fight her. <laughs> Believe me, that's not what I wanted. And you know, and, you know, I have no shame. I got no hair on my tongue. That's just how it is. And you kids from Jersey and the East Coast, you know what I'm talking about. But try not to be so much of a tough guy because you got to be known first. Because these execs will kick you out quick. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions? Oh, Emily, oh, real uh, quickly. Oh, sorry. No, real quickly. I, this is important. Anytime you write a script, anytime you write a treatment and you think it's done, register it with the union, whether you're a member or not. There's a registration tab on the site. You pay 20 bucks and you're protected for five years. Nobody's going to take it from you. Your idea, the character is nothing. The WGA will protect you. It's very important you get that certificate. Um, let me see. I have a copy of mine here. This is what it looks like. This is for Star Trek Atlantis. Let me see if I can get it off a little bit. Yeah, see? Nobody can mess with it. I did one different. I added a certificate of registration with the government also because... I don't want anybody saying that, well, Star Trek's a franchise and, you know, basically everything you're saying is ours. Well, okay, yeah, you got that, but the characters are mine, the ship is mine, uh, the storyline is mine. I could change it to a whole different thing. You know, I don't have to be Starfleet. I could be something else, but I don't want to do that because I love the franchise too much. My job was to fill in the holes of the story. From 1966, when the first TOS came out, till now, you know? And what I did with this story, I filled in the holes that people had questions about. Um, what else? I'm sorry, somebody had a question. Let's do that. Emily has a question in chat that just says, how do you approach feedback, both giving and receiving feedback? Honey, you're going you're gonna to get a lot of people that either hate it or love it. It's just simple. I mean, you can't take it personal. People are different. Everybody's got the right to their opinions. I always said, if you don't like the show, turn the channel. <laughs> it's just simple as that. There's 700 channels out there. You don't have to watch my show. But I would love you to. If you like it, great. If you don't, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll come up with a better idea to suit you later. 
But right now, I'm working on this project. I hope that, that answers it. You can't take it personal. You can't. You really can't. I know it's hard, but you're not a bad writer. It's just that some people don't like the person, the character that you portray. Okay, real quickly. I'm writing a story for Netflix. It's already registered so I can talk about it. It's called One Thin Slice. It's about a girl who moved into Brooklyn uh, from a Ritchie house in Connecticut and got a job uh, at a pizza shop. Well, she falls in love, a 21-year-old. She falls in love with the pizza son's owner, the pizza's owner's son. <laughs> it's getting late. And they're ready to get married. And she finally tells him a couple of weeks before the wedding that she was born a boy. Now, people might not like that. They'll probably go, oh, that's horrible. Why would you do something like that? A lot of people are going to go, yeah, it's about time. So you see what I'm saying? This is the opinion of the audience. You want to make sure that you're sucking them in. And you're going to say, hey, this is the story. You want to see what happens next week? Watch this. That's how it is. You got to think in the business end. Do you feel personally affected by the writer strike and the actor strike? No. Nope. I've been a union girl all my life, and I'm not going to change now. Uh, Fran, Fran Dresha, is from our neighborhood. You know that. And she don't play. <laughs> She's the president of the... Um, the union, the, the Actors Guild, and my president, WGA, wonderful. So no, I I was good with it. I'm good. Okay, any other craft advice? Okay. Take your time. There's no rush. You're not gonna it's not gonna come. I mean, if you see your story come up on TV, change it a little bit. You know, before you get it get it done. Um <laughs> If you like comedy, use situations from your life or from somebody who's close to you and make it funny. Make it a show. Um, pitch the idea. It could be anything. It could be about a kitty cat. Like my little kitty cat Charlie over there who's snapping right now. Uh, I could write a story about her. I could write a story about a remote control. That's, that's how you have to keep your mindset that you're a creator. You're an artist. This is your art. This is your craft. Like a sculptor, a, a, a painter. You're creating stories. You're putting it on paper. You're going to tell the world your story, which is fantastic. It ain't about the credit. It's not about the money. It's about what you put from your heart to the audience. Like I'm trying to do right now with you guys. I'm just happy nobody hung up on me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's a craft. It's an art. You got to take it so serious. Don't, don't write two lines and say, eh, forget about it. I'll do it next week. No, honey, finish it. Get that while it's still fresh in your brain. Put it on paper. You know, hey, oh, by the way, guys, you're always welcome to email me. Go on my site. I'll, I can email you back and forth however long you want it. Uh, I can give you advice. I can read your your treatments or whatever. I would love to do that for you because we need more writers out there. And I hope maybe one of you guys can do it. That would be nice. What else we got? Anybody else? <laughs> Favorite TV show of all time. Oh, my God. I always, what got me, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I was younger, I was into the old movies. And the television show is what I still watch to today is like Dick Van Dyke. And, oh. Adam 12, which I was manly in love with, <laughs> the guy with the black hair. Um, 
Gilligan's Island, stuff like that. Whatever made me laugh, those were my favorites. I don't have a favorite, favorite show because I like all kinds of genres. When I watch the TV show, yeah, I giggled a lot, but I always noticed how many cameras were on that scene. Like every time a scene goes to another position, my mother used to go, what are you looking at? I said, I'm counting the cameras, Ma. So how do you know this? It's just, well, it's just every time the scene moves, you know there's another clip. And she used to tell me, that's editing. I says, I know, but the angles are different. So you have to look at the inside and out. That's what I used to do, even in the movies, when I'm watching the old movies. Um, favorite TV character? No. I love them all. They all work hard, and and I'm proud of every one of them, dead or alive. I just love them all. Anything else? Come on, speak up. You still got about 18 minutes, so go for it. <laughs> okay. I'll do it then. Okay. I, I have a question for you. Sure, go ahead, Carolyn. Um, I'm just wondering if you would ever write yourself into a show and be part of the show. Oh, I you did? did. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Very good. Okay, there's a part in Star Trek Atlantis, and I said, why can't I do it? It's just a small, teeny, tiny part. Again, I wrote four seasons, and it's only like a bit part. I want to be the transporter chief. The one that kind of gives one of the girls a hard time. So, <laughs> yeah, I did that. Hey, I look at it this way. Um, you only get one life. You're not a video game. You don't come back to life after you drop dead. I want everybody to remember me. Yeah. <laughs> I that's... know that shit. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, thoughts about the hero's journey and other structures. Can you clarify on that? Donna? I guess the, I think it's called the hero's journey. It, I don't know. It goes through these ups and ups and downs. Um, I don't, you okay. know, I mean, like a very, a very structured okay. Good. way of plotting out, you know, of um, creating your plot. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. When I created Captain Vivian T. Kelly uh, and the other characters on the bridge. I started thinking about what kind of a woman is she? So I says, first question was, who would I want to play her? And you guys are going to think I'm nuts. I want a Kelly Ripper. You're going to think, why? Because she's perfect for the part that I wrote for us. Now I write for her in the show, in my mind, okay? She is a mom. She's a wife. She's she's from Jersey. Uh, <clears throat> she's got that attitude I love. I I believe that she could run a starship. Her background, that's when you start thinking about is a lot involved. I started thinking of, okay, what is she like a don't like? Is she a bitch on the bridge or is she lovable? Or gets it like the other ones? No. I says, what can I do to make it better? Oh, I can make it. Admiral James T. Kirk's great granddaughter. Okay. Now I got a background. This is good. Who else would I put on there? Who was she like? Well, she's got two kids living on Earth. Her husband flies a sign ship while she's out hopping the galaxy and she's worrying about her children being with his parents all the time while them out while they're out doing what they have to do. Okay. She's very commanding and authoritative, but people love her. She's very well respected, but every enemy and every species on in the galaxy is kind of frightened of her because she doesn't, she knows how to pull the trigger. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So that's how you start from the bottom 
and you work your way up. And every time you write an episode or a scene or a block, you add something more. Like she's sitting on the bridge. The ship goes into a wormhole. Why did it go into a wormhole? They're trying to stop the, the, the ship before it hits the sun. Well, they finally get out of it. She gets so annoyed. All you do is see her eyes go up. And she stands up and goes right into engineering. Pissed off. And she lets her have it. But while she's yelling at her in her own way, she understands why the engineer failed to do what she was supposed to do. And now her attitude changes still too authoritative, but empathetic. She goes, okay, I understand. But the next time it happens, I'm going to tie you on the back of the ship and I'm going to fly you outside yourself, all by yourself. So, yeah, you have to build it <clears throat> as you go along. But the basis of your character, you got to come up with that yourself. You have to mold her or him into the way you want to see this character. And then the other one should fall into place. Every time there's an episode you write, it gets easier and easier. And finally, boom, you have it. Let's see what that says. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Now. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, real quickly. You have to be a person yourself i'm not saying become civil if you remember that story but you gotta project your emotions <clears throat> and your feelings when you'd rather be silly when your character is being silly that's got to be part of you if the other one is just a plain old bitch that's got to be you if the other one is lovable and sweet, that's got to be part of you. But you got to feel it. You got to make that character bring it out. You got to bring it out. You understand? They're not going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. You got to guide them. So every time you write a line like um, Amanda, underneath the, her name, there's parentheses on her mood. Or how she feels real quickly, one or two, one or two uh, words, and then you write the dialogue. Again, everything will be in these books. Um, there's no colleges or LA film schools not going to teach you about this stuff. They only teach you the, the business end, which I went. I got a bachelor's in video production and television production, uh, but they never offered a class on screenwriting. They'll give you great English lessons. And teach you the format, excuse me, but everything else is you. Again, it's an art. Somebody can teach you how to hold a paintbrush, but honey, that art comes from your brain. It comes from your heart and it comes from your hand onto the canvas. And that's exactly what you're doing. Anybody else? Well, we still got time. Come on, don't be afraid. Turn on your mics. Let me hear those beautiful voices. Hi, this is Christine. Would you um, show us the books again and the book title? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to push this one. This is Right to TV, Marty Cook. Now there is a newer edition on Amazon um, that she just done. I think it's a third edition. Because you got to understand, this industry changes so much. You got to keep up with the times. It's just that simple. Let me give it to you one more time so you see it. Write the TV. There you go. This is my favorite book. Love it. Uh, it even teaches you how to write for news. You might be interested in being a news writer. Okay, real quickly. You ever see... Um, the newscasters, right? They, they yipping and yapping and stuff like that. You really think that's them talking all this stuff? No, honey. They're reading it from a script uh, script monitor. <laughs> Sometimes you might catch it when they say a joke. No, honey, that's on the script monitor. 
Okay, it's on. It's attached to the camera, so their format is so different. It's actually like a split screen, and you got video on the left, and then you got what you want them to say on the right, and then it goes through a roll on this monitor in front of them, and it, yeah, and it just tells them what to say. So that's that's a different genre you might consider about doing. It plays very well too. Um, Anything else? Come on, don't be afraid. How about? Um, thank you so much for doing this. By the way, I'm always I'm always to, interested to hear. I have some challenges with kind of writing every day, um, as opposed to like. Do you have any structures that really work? for you or I don't know how often mm -hmm. you sit down to write but I do feel like that's like a muscle that we maybe need to develop or create a routine okay. around maybe okay thank you you're a writer no of course honey I don't write every day <laughs> I don't there's days I don't want to be bothered with it I keep my computer closed or whatever I'll think about it later. Mm -hmm. every oh uh, you got to be in the mood for it because if you push it you're going to screw it up okay yeah again just like sculpting the face you says oh crap i gotta do this down now the nose is upside down so yeah you gotta want to do it yeah. but once you get into the role of it and okay i wrote four seasons in two years hmm. that's pretty good because i got into it i had another story well i write one on on uh paper because you always start off with pencil and paper, and then you go to the next one, and then you go to the next one. So, oh, yeah, I want this to happen. Mm. Then you go to the next mm. one. That's when you're on a roll. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. And there, a lot of them are still pencil and paper yet. <laughs> First draft. Yeah. Um, if the kids are interested, there's a program that studios want you to get. It's called Final Draft. Oh, it's a yeah. Program. Yeah. It, that's the only ones they want. Don't, let, don't listen to nobody else. Final draft is the only one they want you to use. Hmm. Uh, and then you can change it to a PDF after you're done. And then you send it out to the studio for your hmm. agent. Um, it's 250 bucks for that. And you always get free upgrades. So once you got it, you got it. Um, I suggest you get it. Learn the program. It's so easy. Oh, my God. Um you can even do plays on it if you're a playwright. You can do that, mm -hmm. or there's so many ways. You can write a book on it, which is kind of cool. Uh, you won't catch me doing that, but it's called Final Draft. I feel like there used to be a free program of that, too, though. I may, I may be mistaken. No, no, it's you can download it for free, but <laughs> they don't want that money. You want that card. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, um, you can collaborate with other people with it, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things you could do with it. So I, I remember getting it. It was Final Draft 9. Now they gave me Final Draft 12. So you never have to worry about it after that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but they don't want nothing else. So don't listen to nobody saying, oh, yeah, this one's better. I got a studio to buy bull. All right, because if it ain't Final Draft, they don't want it. Uh, it even does the title page for you and everything. Um, get the book. Dun, 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 dun. And if you're really, really serious on it, do it. Don't be afraid. You're not. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Nobody's going to say, oh, this story's so stupid. No, don't think that. If you think it's great, push it. Push it. Fix it, polish it. It's going to take you a hundred times so you know you got it right. But you know what? It's a lot of fun doing it. It's a lot of fun. Just creating it is great. So, okay, we still got, uh, let's see. We still got about five minutes. Anybody else? Don't be afraid. Oh, my God. When you're in this business, honey, you got to voice out everything. I mean, you're going to be doing the Zooms a lot. And, uh. <laughs> advice for finding a mentor you got me 
Don't be afraid. <laughs> um, my email is Giovanna Rizzo 99 at gmail.com. I'm here. Or you can go on my website and you can click the little thingy on the bottom that says email Giovanna. I got you. I want to, that's it. That's the uh, exact email. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's see. Um, don't quit your day, day job. <laughs> All right. Don't quit your day job unless you work in a, in a studio every day. Still work at the grocery store or wherever you're working. All right. You need that income. So, yeah. Okay. Talk more about how to get an agent in the east of North Carolina. Okay. Do you, you might get a local one. Uh, try to try to stay on the east side because there's two unions. There's WGA West and there's WGA East. They're both the same union, but they, they divided it up right down the center of the United States. Uh, Wilmington, Alabama, that would be the east side. <clears throat> uh, honey, I belong to both. I mean, I'm a New York girl and I my union's in California, so it doesn't really matter, but it's better if you stick to one side because your agent will want to deal with them and then deal with you. And again, I'm from C I'm in Seattle right now. I've been here for over 20 years and I, I stay on the California side right now until I go to New York here. Um, that's just business stuff. Don't even worry about that. You can get an agent in California or it doesn't matter. If they like your project, they're going to want that money. They want that 15%. So don't worry about all of that. That's that's minor. Just get somebody to sign you. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm having fun. I, I, have, I, I guess I have another question as far as that agent goes. Just because yeah. I'm wondering, did you just buy one of those books about that lists all the different agents and then you were no. emailing or you found a database or something or a project that you liked maybe you found yeah, some, yeah. the Just database wondering how is usually oh that's easy on the wga website wga.org okay that's the union and in the there you're going to see a tab anybody can go on it it's going to say agents managers or employers Click that. You're going to get a list from A to Z of every agent, manager, and whatever it is. Just good luck trying to get it. You know, uh, they'll give you the address, the phone number. A lot of them will not take unsolicited scripts. That means you kind of got to know somebody to get in. So, yeah, I am on IMDb Pro. Um, let's see. Uh, but a lot of them are looking right now because the actors are on strike. We just got out. We just got a new contract. So everybody's like, yay. So it's kind of easier right now. But get your project done first. Okay. Get it done or close to it. Get your treatment done. Make sure that's polished. And send it out to your agent. Say, look, this is a story idea. And yeah. Okay. It's on WGA.org. You're just going to have to do a lot of searching. Uh, like you highlight the name of the company, like AAA Talent Agency. Highlight it. Google it. It'll give you the email address or whatever you need. Write them a letter. Okay? You try not to go through CAA, you know, like that. They're way too big. Or WME, William Morris. They'll pick you up when they think they can make money. Um, entertainment lawyers. Okay. Entertainment lawyers want 25% of your income um, opposing to a manager or an agent. An agent wants 10, the manager wants 15. Some lawyers want 25 to 35%. It might be a good idea to get one in the beginning, but unless your cousin's one, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I stick with the agents and managers. Yeah. If you don't have a manager or an agent, well, you got to start somewhere. But again, 
we're over time right now, and I don't care. So if your kids are okay with you, you can go another couple of minutes. Uh, if you don't have a manager or an agent, get one. I know it's hard, but honey, you need them. Uh, you have to find an entertainment lawyer who specializes in entertainment. They're very pricey again, and they usually want to retain them. So again, if it ain't your cousin Phil or your Aunt Madeline, in my personal opinion, I leave it alone. Uh, but if, you, if you're comfortable with it, go with it. Yeah. I think I could spare another two minutes and then we'll call it good. Anything else? Emily asked about advice for writer's block. Oh, writer's block. Okay. Hmm. Leave it alone. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Go about your day. Go cut the lawn or something. <laughs> it's okay. It, it happens. It's normal. It's human. You know, it's like one day you're writing great and all of a sudden, like, crap, I don't know what to do. Well, that's when you leave it alone. It's a, just leave it alone. Give it a couple of days. Something will pop up. You might see a light. You might see a, a clock. You might see something that will kick it off. That's how usually ideas happen. Just don't force yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't ever stress yourself. It's just a story, okay? It's all it is, it's just TV. It's okay, just sit back and relax. <laughs> okay, um, Jerry, what do you think? I think if you're good and everybody else is, is satisfied and they don't have any more questions, I, I think we're good. All right, good, like I said, kids, Contact me anytime, honey. It's okay. I'm not going to say I'm too busy for you. Never. Because if you're really serious about the craft, I will hold you. I will do what I need to do to get you going. Okay? All right, guys. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And I love it. I hope to see you kids soon. All right? Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks again. Oh, Bye. Bye-bye.